All right, so we got another BNR update coming up. I just wanted to quickly give my thoughts on what I think should happen and what I would like to see. Uh, importantly, first thing I want to outline is how I'm looking at this is going to be is if this is the card legality that we're going to see for Worlds also, because I'm not sure if we're going to have another BNR update between ProQuest and Worlds. There's a reality where that doesn't happen. I think after we had that shakeup ban between was it like ProQuest and PT1? People were kind of upset about that. So it's pretty realistic to see them not do that again and just like let us keep the same format. So an important thing to look at is going to be what is the current Living Legend status. And I think that's going to dictate a lot of this. And the big thing is, you know, Lexi and Icelander, we're going to be keeping those. So whatever we see for the BNR update is going to include these no matter what happens. So that might, might mean that we still have these for Worlds. Obviously, thank you, Charles. No more Briar. So the big talking point here is going to be Lexi. Should Lexi have anything go? And if so, what? And then obviously beyond Lexi, is there anything that needs to change? Uh, in my opinion, I don't think we really need anything to happen to Lexi. I think at this point, just let her LL. Just let her ride off into the sunset and just let the natural course of things happen. But while i think that nothing needs to happen to the deck i personally for the enjoyment of most people playing this pro quest season think a small adjustment to her kind of like we saw with bullseye bracers but that was like really not a small adjustment that was like a major change to her uh but something more in line with like autumn's touch where it's just like little like jenga piece that you're taking out of the tower that subtly changes a lot about the deck and just the overall power level of it but not being a big monetary change to the deck and letting the deck still function the card that i personally would really like to see uh, get banned out of the deck would be red arctic incarceration i think this card is incredibly unfun and polarizing to play against sometimes it leads to a lot of weird game situations where it's like i'm looking for my spot to pivot into the lexi of like okay the lexi didn't come in that hot Maybe this is the turn that I get to keep some cards and actually play the game through whatever they're doing. But if they Arctic hit me here, it just, everything goes down the toilet and I should have just blocked. But I'm not going to know I should have blocked until the very end of the turn because they're going to, they're going to go like arrow, arrow, do you want to block either of these? Okay, now I'll Arctic you get fleshed. It makes it very hard to understand how you're supposed to play around into the Lexi and just leads to a lot of feel bad situations and kind of puts you in a spot sometimes where you're like, you know, I could say no blocks here and try to pivot. The risk is so high that I might as well just keep blocking because I don't know if they still have this in their hand. The Lexi's gambling nothing because they haven't given me any info on what they could have in their hand. I'm basically deciding whether or not I lose the game instantly if they have this or not. And that that's a really tough gamble to make and is kind of unfun. This also opens up a lot of decks to like being playable again. It feels like a lot of other aggro decks just like can't exist in the meta right now because of Lexi. It's like partly because she's the better aggro deck. So it's like, why would I play a different aggro deck? But also just like the sheer ho hosing potential of cards like this into the matchup of Lexi versus any other aggro deck is so high that it's like, it feels really hard to convince yourself to play an aggro deck into this. There's like other cards you could theoretically ban out of Lexi. I hear a lot of people talk about like three of a kind, Rain Razors, Voltaire, uh, Codex is a card that I've been talking about for a while that I think needed to go instantly. At this point, I think, again, just let the hero LL. I don't disagree with the argument of heroes should have powerful and good cards. It's what makes the game fun and interesting. I forget who said that on Twitter, but I like that take of like, we're not playing chess. I agree with that. We're not playing chess. So we should, we should have these interesting, powerful things. I do think that Codex was too powerful and creates a lot of play patterns very similar to Arctic, where you just gank your opponent at the end of the turn and they didn't really have any uh, ability to play around that sometimes. And that also leads to unfun things. I think that's like one of the biggest unfun things about Fab, which is when you get your agency stripped from you of how you're gonna play your turn. Like, I don't know what you're gonna do, but I at least know what I wanna do on my turn. And then your opponent taking that ability from you can feel bad. I don't think card, all cards that have that kind of ability should be taken out of the game. If you go down that route, you end up with where Magic ended around Kaladesh, where they ended up getting rid of 
like mana leaks and doom blades and things. And then we ended up with a really degenerate format with the Aetherworks Marvel deck. Just there was very little counterplay to decks like that because they removed a lot of the removal from the format that was good. I think having some of these kind of effects is important for the game. You know, we, we need to interact with each other and people just saying no blocks play my hand and then the other person going, I agree, I will also no blocks and play my hand. That's not fun and interesting. Uh, interaction is good for the game, but agency stripping can be something that I, I I personally really don't like that effect and I find a lot of other people don't either that this this is anecdotal but I think that is something to be looked at but at this point it's too late Lexi's already about to LL I think just leave it alone just a small tweak is good enough not uh, cut the rest of the stuff because honestly the rest of these cards really aren't a problem in the rest of the Rangers or to the the level of they're just actively bad in the other rangers like three of a kind saw zero play before lexi and it's probably going to see zero play once voltaire leaves the format now another card that i saw a lot of people talking about banning was tomaltai very recently i agree with what dm armada said with that was a take that i was not expecting people to have from this format of man lexi's really oppressive we should ban tomaltai that, that's an odd take. I think I can understand it a bit, though, of it can feel bad having... Uh, again, it's it's the whole agency stripping thing. The Tomaltai comes down, and you're just like, this is my life now. My equipment dies. I have no ability to stop this from happening. It just happens. Some people might build their entire game plan around doing that. Now, I don't agree with that. I don't think that was correct to do in Drome. I'd say, I'm just going to try winning off of Tomaltai. I would play that game plan sometimes because I'd see a Tomaltai early. But I don't think it was correct to just blinders on, I'm just going to wait for Tomaltai and try winning the game off of that. Because a lot of times, if you saw it too late, you take way too much damage to get the Tomaltai down. Cool, you got their helmet. And it's not even a guarantee you get their helmet, mind you. You take so much damage where it doesn't matter anymore. You can't, like, do anything at this point. They, they just go, okay, whatever, I'll sack my helmet. Uh, kill you? Because you're, you're at, like, 10 life or something. Like, you can't Tomaltai at that range. I think something that is bad about it is the level of variance it can add to a game uh, i'm not even talking about the like flipping over cards thing more the aspect of because it's a one of the inconsistency of games of how the matchup can feel when i see this early versus when i see it late can feel bad uh i i can get kind of behind that but eh. my thought with it is kind of you know going back to the whole lexi thing lexi's about to ll let her ride off into the sunset once Lexi LLs, like, what is this card, like, actually doing now? It The only times you, like, are trying to play Tomaltai is if you're playing against a Fatigue deck and they present AB1 and you get their 1 AB. Guardians, they'll a lot of times present AB2, so this doesn't matter. Them getting to guarantee keep their a 1 AB and register AB1 instead and then bring Gauntlets instead... I don't think meaningfully changes anything in the matchup. Them, them starting with three more life because of their armor, I don't think changes anything in the matchup. It just means that, like, maybe you just don't play Burn at all anymore and you just play a different game plan. It, it wasn't an integral card to the matchup anyways. It's just, like, good. And then the only other time I'm trying to play this is against Ninja. A cursed, horrible matchup that this maybe makes playable. The games that you get to Tomaltai their mask you're at least playing a real game now. It's not even like you're favored when you kill their mask. It's just like, all right, I can at least attempt to play the game now. Is that a reason to ban a card? Like this is a niche relevant card in two matchups and isn't even integral to the matchups. It's really just like, it feels bad when that happens and you're playing Lexi, the dominant deck of the format honestly boohoo like you're playing the meta deck I, I don't know why you're complaining that people are allowed to have counterplay that that feels like a really odd take to me but okay i think it's fine i think i can understand it going on the aspect of again it's a one of in the deck and games can feel swingy if you see it early versus see it late but that only matters in matchups that this is your entire game plan which i just think is incorrect now, there's a couple of cards that are kind of on my watch list of cards that I have wanted to go. Uh, as I mentioned, Codex. I think Codex is less of an issue, though, once Lexi leaves the format. That now is in the territory of, uh, okay, the few heroes that can play this, let them have powerful cards. I think in Lexi, it was an issue of critical mass of powerful cards, and she used it better than any other hero. Where the heroes that now can use it, it's like, it's good. 
they have a small power spike on that turn. It's not like insane. So I think it's fine leaving it, whatever. Now some cards that I would love to see go at some point, they don't necessarily need to go right now. They're just like on my radar of like, these are problem cards, deal with them before they become a problem again. Pouncing Lynx has always been a card that I thought was way too powerful. It reminds me of Carrion Husk, but then it doesn't have blood debt when you use it. A lot of times let you start the game with a minimum of five damage on board. And that is ridiculous for you to have a piece of armor that just has a five value. And a lot of times it was more than that. I would say the average was like six, seven. Sometimes you could get eight out of it if you had like a crazy salt the wound round. There's just like one of those things that felt like it was not balanced around you being able to uh, always grab a card from your deck that was worth more than two value. Maybe three value was kind of within that. A spectrum of things that was reasonable for it but i i'm sure a lot of people are going to disagree with me on this so there's a lot of people out there that love ninja are gonna go ninja isn't even good right now why are you trying to ban cards out of it when it isn't seeing play uh, again i would like to restate the intent here is this is cards that are on my radar that preemptively could be dealt with i don't think they're a problem right now but i think they are a potential problem in the future and I am personally a fan of dealing with problems before they become a problem in games rather than waiting for them to become an issue and then everyone starts complaining and then we have to have a surprise ban. Then people lose money because they invested money in these cards. It's like deal with it while it's cheap is kind of a, a, a mentality there that I have. I don't think that most people are going to agree with me on that though. But that's, you know, this is my opinion. I'm allowed to have my opinion, you know, whatever. And then similarly, same idea, Crown of Seeds. This has been a uh, thorn in the side of the game for a long time. This is always going to be a card that creates problems. I, I think it's going to be very hard for them to design a hero that doesn't turn this card into a problem again. No one can play it anymore. Get rid of it. Now is the time to get rid of it where no one's going to feel bad about it of like, oh no, my crown of seeds that I spent $100 on. It's Bro, you literally can't play this in anything anymore. This is literally worthless in your collection. It's just a vanity piece. And then it still has a home in Blitz. You can still technically play it in Briar. It doesn't matter beyond that. Like it doesn't, this value isn't propped up by Blitz Briar. And then we have Living Legend format coming up. Let it be played there. I don't expect this to happen. As I said, this is something that I would love to see happen. And lastly has been the uh, hot button card of the community over the past couple months, Warmonger's Diplomacy. Do not expect this to actually get banned, but I would love, love to see this card banned. I think it is incredible incredibly unfun to play against. I personally don't like what it did to the metagame. It felt like a forced meta shift of we're just saying these decks don't get to see play anymore. Now, we've seen a ton of innovation and meta development by uh, players to play around this card. Trench and Lexi, but uh, you could play more go again attacks to kind of get around this. There's a lot of really interesting and smart things people have done to get around this card. But what it's done to some other decks, like Runeblade, feels really bad for them. Now, as a non-Runeblade player, as an Illusionist player who hates seeing Runeblades, you know, I love to see that. I love getting to sit down and go, great, one of my worst matchups, literally can't see it. I think that's unfair to say a card should exist because it's uh, beneficial to my kind of strategy. I think it's fair to realize the detriment it's causing to other people. I, know, I don't expect that to actually happen. This card's expensive and i appreciate that lss has gone out of their way to make interesting and creative bands that don't neuter decks and go after cards that aren't really worth that much money so it doesn't really affect people's collections because there is the reality of if you ban someone's card they spent a lot of money on or kill their deck they may quit the game off of that and never come back I saw that time and time again when I played Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the day. I really appreciate that, and I think that's really smart of them to go about it that way. And I think people would be mad about that with this too, where it's a brand new card. They went out of their way to drop like a hundred bucks on a play set, and then it gets banned because it's unfun to play against. That seems unreasonable on the other side of things, but it is a card that I think is an issue, and I would have loved to see this go away, but at this point, I don't think it's going anywhere. Realistically, I don't think any of these things need to happen. I think the for format is perfectly fine. This is, I think, the best CC format I have played in the entirety of the time I've been playing Flesh and Blood, going all the way back to Monarch when I started playing. I feel like 
this format has had a lot of my favorite things. Uh, going back to what I was mentioning about Warmongers, I feel like there's been a ton of organic meta development. It hasn't just been people playing the best deck and just you see the same thing from the start of the format to the end. There's been so much diversity in meta of what's topping the lists, the strategies, the way people are trying to counter the strategies, the way people are countering the counter to that strategy. It's been so interesting watching and playing. I've really enjoyed that. It's a lot of my favorite things about card games. And it doesn't feel like you have to play the best deck or you're just an idiot for not playing that. That's something that I haven't liked in previous formats. It felt like you're you know, you're an idiot for not playing Chain back in the day. You're an idiot for not playing Starvo. Like, there, you're not an idiot for not playing Briar. Like, I don't like feeling like I have to play something. And that's one thing I love about Flesh and Blood. The deck expression and mastery that you can have in a hero. And this format has really felt like it's shown that a lot. Like, you can go really far in this format by just being very good at the game and just playing the best deck, but you could also do very good by being very good at a very specific hero and understanding all the ins and outs of it and all the matchups. It lets a lot of different players with different skill sets shine, and I love that. If we just stayed in this format, I would be perfectly fine with it. I don't need any changes. I think my main thing is I would just like to see a small tweak to Lexi. And I think Lexi maintains her spot as the top deck in the format, even with that gone. I don't think that was a card that was by any means necessary for the deck. It just opens up a little more uh, options for uh, how you can go about tackling Lexi now. Well, what do you think? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Tell me if you think anything needs to go and what you would do to the format. While you're down there, make sure you hit subscribe. Check out my Patreon where I'm making some guides and articles on how to improve at the game. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you.